Following extensive performance testing under numerous workloads, we've identified that there is a missing digital key in the firmware that impacts the thermal management system and could drive clock speeds down under heavy thermal loads on the new MacBook Pro. A bug fix is included in today's Mac OS High Sierra 10.13.6 supplemental update and is recommended. We apologize to any customer who has experienced less than optimal performance on their new systems. Customers can expect the new 15-inch MacBook Pro to be up to 70% faster and the 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar to be up to two times faster, as shown in the performance results on our website. That's the statement Apple sent me to address the recent controversy surrounding the 2018 MacBook Pro and how it manages power and performance. It started with Dave2D on YouTube, who experienced really bad and it now turns out really buggy performance on the new MacBook Pro 2018 with a specific Adobe Premiere workload. While Apple couldn't initially reproduce the results, the company spent the last few days working with them to try to figure out what was going wrong. The fix, which Apple will be making available via software update around the time this video hits and following up on with a push notification, won't just benefit people with worst case scenario workloads, but should help with all the workloads on Coffee Lake MacBook Pro. That, despite Apple insisting its own benchmarks run prior to release and touting up to 70% improvements in some tasks weren't affected by the bug and are still accurate. Likewise, the workloads and results of the video, photography, music, science, and developer experts the company hosted and made available to media during the MacBook Pro launch. My own test with my own workloads, which skew heavily towards video, showed about as much of a performance increase over the 2017 MacBook Pro as the 2017 MacBook Pro did over the 2016 MacBook Pro, maybe a little more in some cases. That seems to align with Jonathan Morrison of TLD Today, who put the new machines through the most comprehensive real-world tests I've seen so far. In some cases, it's up to 50% better. In other cases, just a few minutes here, a few minutes there, and that might not seem like much to someone who only renders a couple of videos a week, but to somebody who renders a couple of videos every 15 minutes, which isn't at all uncommon at a production house, it can make all the difference in the world. And that's especially true when you have a director or artist or client on the other end of the line with far less time than they have money just chomping at the bit to iterate and sign off on every shot. That's what makes real world testing so important. Downloading an Intel power gadget and throwing up a video, blog post, or Reddit thread, not understanding anything about benchmarks, CPU versus GPU load, what's hitting an accelerator or what's hitting AVX too, what's being measured and how frequently, whether or not the tool is up to date or tuned for the system it's being used on, or how it might affect the results, especially if it's just to get attention or spout off conspiracy theories, ends up contributing to the noise, not to useful data points. And by the way, if all of that sounded like a bunch of jargon or Dothraki to you, that's because it is. It's stuff old-fashioned computer geeks lived for, but it's increasingly meaningless to modern mainstream customers. We're living in an age where Moore's Law, or more often House's Law, which predicts that performance would double roughly every 18 months is dead or dying. And as computers continue to become more mobile and pro-level computing more mainstream, aggressive thermal management in constrained enclosures is something we're all gonna have to come to terms with. It's the reason why Apple doesn't break out things like RAM or frequencies on iPhone or iPad, and why I think Apple is increasingly viewing the Intel chips inside the Mac as an implementation detail, at least until it's ready with an alternative. Sure, in a perfect world, I think Apple and everybody else would have far preferred it if Intel weren't so far behind in its roadmap, if Canon Lake had actually followed Skylake, the process shrink had happened on schedule, the tick had continued with talk, and we never had optimization cycles like KB Lake and Coffee Lake and whatever other lakes got crammed in between, or if more cores didn't have to be used as a fallback for performance gains. Given that, I totally get how a few people who prefer power over portability and don't really get how Apple's product development process works would have vastly preferred the MacBook to go thick with a couple of F22 Raptor vents welded onto a 17-inch chassis so frequencies would never fall below base. I mean, even when they legitimately fall below base for undisclosed vector frequencies, right? But Apple seems to think the iMac, and especially iMac Pro, better covers those requirements and wants to keep its Pro portable really portable. Now that macOS High Sierra 10.13.6 supplemental update with the digital key fix is out, it's going to take some time for me, and more importantly, people way smarter than me, to run their tests and see just how much difference it makes with the Adobe workload and with other workloads. I'll be using tools that surface all the details about CPU and GPU utilization, memory, network activity, battery and power, and more. Things like iStat Menu that give you a window into the heart of the machine. I've been using that app for years and it's one of the first apps I install on any new Mac I'm reviewing. In fact, I am sneakily using it right now as I run a bunch of tests.
It's also just one of the over 120 apps you get access to from a single subscription with SetApp. For just $9.99 a month, you can download any and all of the apps you want and use them as much as you want with no ads, no in-app purchases, no additional costs, and all the features and automatic updates you expect. And because SetApp is sponsoring the show, you can use the special link in the description to try it for free for seven days. I honestly think it's the future of apps. Give it a try and thanks SetApp. I was originally planning to have my review yesterday, but given Apple's update, given the apology, it's gonna take a few more days for me to get everything tested and ready. But in the meantime, I'd love to know what you think. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment below, and thank you so much for watching.